With Creatures done, we either had to lose the window of our tour or go off on tour with this guy. We eventually caved in and accepted Vinny. When the decision was made to bring him in, I said to Gene, I just want to go on record saying this is a bad move. Lead guitarist Ace Fraley no longer tours with Kiss, and drummer Peter Chris has left the group. What? Everybody loved Ace. If we had hoped that taking him into the fold might lessen the headaches of dealing with him, those hopes were not fulfilled. Oops. With the Creatures Tour coming on the heels of several financial disasters, we'd had to tighten our belt so Vinny didn't get a Porsche. Mean Mr. Mustard. Yeah. He wanted to be called Mick Fury. What? I didn't have the heart to tell him that he wasn't qualified to do this kind of stuff and that he should just show up on time and make lots of money. Uh, I, I get that part. Why did everybody come up with cartoon names? I just looked at him like, are you serious? No. We settled on Vinnie Vincent. Paul designed Vinnie's Ankh makeup and his Wiz character. After playing around with ideas for his makeup, I designed the Egyptian Ankh image. And it's an Ankh symbol. It's called, uh, it's an Ankh, it's Egyptian for life. Wow. Something happened when we began to write songs together. You know, for whatever unhappiness there was, uh, I think, it was meant to be. As far as his knowledge of and understanding of the guitar, Vinny was terrific. I'd written with him and heard him play and sing and knew his talent. He wrote some really interesting things uh, at, at rehearsals before Paul would get there. What? <laughs> and Christ, we were fucking hot, the three of us. All of a sudden, there was nothing that was holding anybody back, and, you know, it was like, you know, unbridled. It was just a three piece Gene, me, and Eric. Vinny Worsen. It was pretty obvious from very early on that he really was not into being a member of a band. He wanted his own band. And he try and one of the reasons why he was he didn't stay with us is because he tried to turn things around and like kind of make it his band, you know, and that's not the way it is. Yeah. It was a great time for the band and it could have gone on. There was there was only one thing stopping it, and I think you know the answer to that. He didn't sign his contract. Ever. Finally we told him he had to sign. I won't go too far into too much because whatever I say becomes just, just controversial and, and becomes a mess. It was an offer of employment. He could be in the band or not. What well, it, it was it was contractual. All of the problems we had were contractual. There's so much politics and so much stuff going on, you know. But we didn't want to discuss it. It was non-negotiable. Publishing is like uh, owning your house, owning your car. If you don't own it, you're leasing it, you're renting it. So the people who say that that's not important uh, are usually the ones that want your property. All I had asked for was to, to be treated fair, you know. The problem was that he had no sense of what to play or when, and he had no ability to self-edit. <laughs> it goes, it can go both ways. His playing was like puking, it just came splattering out. He wanted to show how fast he could play, how many notes he could play. He didn't think things out. This became more problematic when the tour started. It was a time of being a guitarist. That's what I wanted to be, you know. That was my time. But working in context of what the band was, I'd say that I give them uh, credit for knowing more than me. On stage, Vinny was hell-bent on using every solo as an opportunity to showcase himself. During the Kiss years, you know, it was, uh, maybe it was self-imposed, you know, limitations, but I, I was nowhere near what I wanted to be. And it was frustrating, you know? And I thought, I'm never gonna be the guitarist I wanna be. I'm never going to breach it, you know. He was intensely jealous of guys like Randy Rhodes and Jakey e. Lee because he thought he was as good as them. You know, you know, it, it was, it was, you know, we're home frustrated. He wanted his just do, and his solo spot in the middle of the show became ungodly long. We used to call it the high point of the show because everybody in the audience left to go get high. Uh, but I love them. I love them both. I, I don't know why it's this continuous need to, to say these things, but I won't. I won't say, I won't, I won't go there because 
uh, because I think everything that had happened was very special. And I think fans know it. I think it was a great chapter in the band's career. Uh, I don't know. I can't speak for that. The Creatures Tour did horrendously in most markets. Before we went on stage, we'd hear, You wanted the best, you got the best. The hottest band in the land. And we'd walk out to find nobody was there. What's a great point we're real proud of is that this tour is our 10th anniversary. We had packed the same venues a few years before, but now, if I threw my guitar pick too far, it sailed over people's heads and landed on the floor. We left blood, as they say in the business. It was a death march for us and for the concert promoters. We got back on track with Creatures, but fans were not that forgiving. It was going to take years to win back our fans and make new fans. We had betrayed them. I figured one of the things that, that people want, they want to hear Vinny play. Oh, uh, God. Not always can you have a band and have a certain... I hate this word magic, but it, it, it is a magic. It's something that you can't put it into words. The Beatles had it. I loved the position I had. I loved the stature of the band and how I was perceived. And losing that was horrible. I dealt with the depression by sleeping. It was my way of checking out. I was so depressed that I couldn't keep my eyes open anywhere. It got so bad that I fell asleep in the dressing room before shows. I still looked to Donna for a sense of calm and security. I could spend hours talking to her on the phone every day. She was gearing up for the release of Dr. Detroit. She told me once again that she needed space. I don't know whether the tour situation or the overall band crisis affected Gene. No. Eric, for his part, didn't understand the financial side. He wasn't aware of how the disastrous turnouts related to our budgeting. He just loved being in the band and loved playing the material from the new album. One morning, just before we left for South America for the last leg of the tour, I glanced at a copy of the newspaper and a small article caught my eye. The actress Donna Dixon has married her Dr. Detroit co-star Dan Aykroyd, newly discovered paperwork shows. The marriage license came to light in Martha's Vineyard. Love is a gun, and love is a blade. What? Martha's Vineyard? Bitch is insane, she deals in pain. It turned out they had already been married for three months. Suddenly, I felt like I was underwater. I could barely move. I called her. You were married when we were talking? She said something about how she hoped I would find what she had found. No explanation, no apology. I hung up. From then on, it was a struggle to do anything. Kiss was now made up of Eric Carr, then Vincent, Paul, and me. We liked Creatures of the Night and hoped for the best, but the album did poorly. The reason that it didn't do as well is because when The Elder came out, fans that were already a little you know, disillusioned and afraid about what was happening with the band, with Peter leaving, um, and then you know, bought The Elder, and maybe they weren't prepared for that because it was a real departure, uh, they probably, I'm sure a lot of fans stayed away from Creatures just being like afraid to, to find out what the band was into. They thought that, you know, it was going to be more of the same or even softer. Oh no! I toured in Australia and Europe and New Zealand with them when I first joined. I haven't played in the States yet, and I'm still... You know, there's still that challenge, is that one final hurdle for me, personally. Well, I already played the hometown. The first show that I did with, the, with Kiss was the Palladium. It took such a long break that some people thought that uh, we had somehow vanished into thin air. We stayed in New York for a while and did sort of normal things, like stay out all night and go to clubs and have lots of girls. And... After I struggled out of bed one day to get to an interview, the reporter asked me, how does it feel to be on the Titanic? Writers looked at us as a commodity and forgot that we were people. Another interviewer asked, how does it feel to be dying? What? They were so hateful. Apparently the audiences are not, uh, the record buying public is not uh, so enthusiastic about the image as they used to be. Think your time has passed? That's a good question. You're in your 30s now. Do you feel slightly ridiculous appearing in public like this anymore? No, no, no. no. Let's hear your message, quote unquote. What are you trying to tell my 14-year-old daughter? Oh. If she was a little bit older, I'd tell her to come to my hotel room. Okay. <laughs> Don't let my daughter go now. I will find you. I will kill you. Those pricks on the phone were not going to decide whether I got the thumbs up or thumbs down in the arena. Kiss was everything to me. And right then I swore I would do whatever it took to keep my life raft afloat. Kiss will never die. 
There were picket lines in Nashville, a record-breaking protest in Little Rock, a standing room only city council meeting in Corpus Christi, and headlines all over the country, Minneapolis, Dubuque, Chattanooga, and Bismarck, North Dakota. The protesters are mainly religious groups who have been trying unsuccessfully to get KISS concerts stopped because, they say, KISS promotes the worship of Satan. <laughs> their music and their lyrics is espousing uh, Satan worship and drugs among our kids. And, huh? and you're looking at a preacher in Pine Bluff, Arkansas that's against it, and we're going to stand against it. I don't think we'd like those people to like us. They're, they're strange. What they do, according to many Christian leaders, is use their evil-looking makeup along with lyrics such as, I was raised by the demons and I'm king of the nighttime world to influence their fans to idolize the underworld. What? KISS knows they can use the controversy. Their concerts have only been selling at 50 to 75 percent capacity, and their latest album, Creatures of the Night, is the poorest selling album of their career. We booked an American tour, and it was the least successful tour we'd ever done. The music scene was changing. Acts like Michael Jackson were in ascent, and no one showed up to hear us play. The Providence Civic Center was built to bring entertainment and business to the area, but it's had problems recently. KISS was supposed to play Providence this weekend, but not enough tickets sold and the concert was canceled. In June 1983, we flew to Brazil and played to 180,000 screaming fans in Maracanã Stadium in Rio. It was the biggest audience we had ever performed in front of. We could still play the biggest stadiums in South America, but we were in a very shaky position in North America. Boy, yes, we're going on tour. Yes, we were going to blow up buildings. And yes, we watch MTV. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. I just want a TV set. <laughs> the biggest change at that time was the rise of MTV. Music was being overtaken by a certain visual style. We'd been a visual band since the beginning, but oddly, our idea of visual panache didn't necessarily translate in the world of early 80s rock and roll. Everything is uh, changing. There's heavy metal for everyone still, and uh, I think the wave has gotten more commercial. Huh? And uh, I, I enjoy it. I really do. I enjoy everything. I love all kinds of music. We knew we had to build KISS from the ground up all over again. So for the first time in our career, we did exactly what we saw was happening with other bands. Instead of being leaders, we decided basically to follow. At around that time, we decided to drop the one visual element that had been associated with KISS most strongly and from the very beginning, our makeup. This is a really big moment. After 10 years together, exclusively here on MTV this evening, we are going to see KISS without their makeup for the very first time. Back in the States, I once again urged Gene to agree to do the most radical thing we could do, take off our makeup. Some people saw this as a bold move. I saw it as our only move. It was great when we were doing it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, nothing that mere humans can do is going to compete with that, you know, because it's a larger-than-life thing, and I was really proud to be a part of that. But at the same time, I could understand, and I was feeling myself, that it was just time for the band to change. I didn't want the makeup to stand in the way of the band. But Kiss was a very happy time. We wrote great songs. We had uh, a great band. I met great fans. Uh, if it wasn't for Kiss, I would not be here. I pro wouldn't be Vinnie Vincent. I'm there for Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, my friend Eric Carr, who's no longer with us, uh, Ace Freely, Peter Chris. I'm there anytime, any place, anywhere. People were tired of what KISS had become. Huh? With the new characters, we were one step removed from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What? I mean, what the hell was Vinny's Ankh about? So now it's Egyptian for a while. Whatever. Rather than keeping the original personas and images alive, we had become a ridiculous menagerie. What was next? Turtle Boy? <laughs> you 